Hello, and welcome to a new edition of HL Explains with your host, Dr. Mario Topes Rodrigo. And today we're going to discuss the top five challenges that you're likely to face when you're trying to achieve consistent yield in your fermentation processes. Fermentation is not something new. It's been with us since the dawn of time. However, this doesn't make it any easier, and we understand that developing a bio process that involves fermentation, it is a very complex and multifaceted task with so many different moving pieces. So in this video, what we're going to discuss is some of these pieces and how we can improve this. So the first one that we are going to face is choosing the right organism. There is so many different organisms that can be used in bioprocesses. This goes from bacteria, fungi, up to mammal cells, and all of them are going to have different requirements. And choosing the right organism is going to be completely riddled with compromises. So one of the first things that we need to bear in mind is what kind of molecule we are synthesizing, what is our molecule of interest, and how complex it is. But also, not all processes are going to just lead to the final uh, molecule. There are certain cellular processes that are going to modify this molecule into its final form. So one of the things that we need to bear in mind is the more similar an organism is to the original producer, the more likely it is to have the same kind of modifications on, this, on these molecules. But also, there is a downside to this. If we are thinking about very complex molecules that are synthesizing superior cells such as animal cells or very evolved plant cells, we are going to have that these cells are more susceptible to be broken, they are more fragile. Whereas if we are moving to organisms such as fungi, yeast or bacteria, they are very resilient. So this is one of the things that we have to balance when we are choosing the organism is how similar it's going to be to the original producer and how resilient it is going to be. But there are certain things that we also need to bear in mind, such as, for example, what is the end product that we are producing and if this product is going to be toxic to the cells? Because obviously that means that there's going to be just a maximum yield that we're going to achieve because otherwise our cells can die. So this compatibility is also that we need to analyze prior to deciding what cell we're going to use. And another thing that we also need to bear in mind is that certain molecules can be produced in cells that are more susceptible to be genetically modified. So maybe originally that cell is not going to produce our metabolite, but maybe it's easy enough to modify the cell in order to produce whatever our molecule of interest is. The second one that we need to bear in mind is designing scalable processes. We understand that it's very easy to operate something at a very small scale. However, as we move bigger and bigger in terms of scale, this is going to potentially affect our consistency. So to address this, we need to find not only strains that are going to be able to be robust and stable, but also we need to be able to analyze, simulate and model what is going to be happening at a plant scale. This involves moving from bench top to medium sized reactors to bigger reactors to then pilot scale and then finally to plant scale. But also, operation modes are also going to have an impact in this kind of, of yield. So there are basically three types of modes that we can use. We can use batch fermentation in which we dump everything into the reactor and let it uh, ferment. This is great, this is easy, but the yield is generally low, although it has quite a fast turnaround. On the opposite side, we have continuous processes in which we are going to be inputting and outputting some of the medium so the conditions are kept ideal for the microorganism to work. This is more expensive to operate, it takes longer, but the, the yield is higher and also it comes with an added benefit that we are not going to have set up and clean down stages. 
And there is an intermediate state in which we have fed batch in which we are going to have an original volume and we are going to be topping it up as the process advances. And this is going to have some of the benefits of, of batch and it's going to have some of the benefits of also continuous. The third one is creating consistent ideal conditions. Biological systems can be quite fastidious. This means they like a very narrow set of parameters, of, of value parameters in terms of physical chemical conditions that they like to operate in. This involves things such as temperature, pH and dissolved oxygen. And all of these um, parameters are going to be very heavily impacted by agitation. An ideal agitation is going to make sure that all the nutrients in our system are going to be homogeneous, there's not going to be pockets in which it's going to be more abundant or it's going to be depleted. And this not only applies to the nutrients, this also applies to the temperature and to the pH and, and the oxygen. If we have anomalies, if we have lack of homogeneity, this is going to have a negative impact in our system that can result in cells dying and a reduced yield in our reactors. So we need to make sure that this is perfectly controlled to prevent any kind of fluctuations that are going to have an impact. But also there are other things that we can do to increase the solubility of certain nutrients that the cells are going to use. Gas are notoriously hard to dissolve in fluids. However, if we use, for example, high pressure systems, this is going to push the gas inside of the medium, increasing the availability of these gases. And gases, I am not talking about only oxygen, this involves CO2, this involves hydrogen, that are going to be available for the cells to be able to use them for their metabolism. The fourth one is achieving viable high quality products. Maintaining consistency throughout batches can be quite a hard task and this needs to comply with quality standards and this becomes even more challenging at larger scales. To prevent this kind of variability, there are certain things we can do to avoid it. Like for example, keeping everything as automatic as possible. This is going to reduce human error that can have an impact on this consistency we're talking about. But also, one of the things that we need to bear in mind in terms of quality is the larger that our volumes are and the longer the fermentation processes are, the more likely we are going to be finding contamination processes. This is because if there is any kind of inoculum of cells that shouldn't be there, if we have very long incubation times, it is more likely that these contaminating cells are going to proliferate, therefore just skewing the quality of our products. So we need to make sure to prevent this, that all the parts on the system are connected, that the aseptic conditions are met, and there is other processes just, such as online stabilization and control systems. And as I said before, automation can play a fundamental role to achieve this consistency. And last, um, by no means least, is managing operational and equipment strain. Sometimes industrial fermentation can put significant strain on the vessels. This may happen when we are using, for example, extremophiles, in which we are using high pressures or high temperatures that can affect the integrity of our systems. But not only that, certain byproducts produced by organisms such as cedarfuls or organic acids can also affect the physical chemical conditions inside of the vessel and therefore affecting the integrity of our vessels. So maintaining this integrity is absolutely paramount. So it is fundamental to understand the process and choose the materials that are going to be compatible with the conditions that are going to be dominating in our processes. And this, what will result, is in an increased longevity in our equipment. So we can see that optimizing a fermentation and a bio process is by no means a menial task. Instead, it requires, and I'm going to use one of these passwords, it requires a holistic approach in which 
so many different variables such as the biology, the chemistry, the physics, and the operational considerations of the system need to be analyzed. Bioprocesses then in turn can become optimal and can ensure product consistency by choosing the right organisms, designing properly scalable processes, and maintaining a strict control over physical chemical conditions. Managing the equipment and implementing automation is going to make the process even easier and is going to enhance its reliability. And once that we put all these strategies in place, then we not only overcome the challenges, but also we can improve our process, make, making it more innovative and sustainable. And that's all for me. My name is Dr. Mario Torres Rodrigo, and I'm the Applications Leader here at HG. If you have any comments or any questions, please don't doubt and preach to us. Thank you very much.